Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to review the PowerPoint that we went over for curriculum night. I'm going to start with Eureka Math Kinder. The daily layout of our um, of our session is we start with the lesson introduction, usually two to five minutes reviewing the previous day's concepts. So in this case, I would talk about what our vocabulary was for yesterday. For example, our, our new vocabulary word yes for yesterday's lesson, lesson nine, was hidden partners. So I'd say, hey, uh, who remembers our um, vocabulary word for yesterday? And then what does it mean? And have students ask, uh, not ask, give me, provide me answers on what they believe. Um, the next thing we do is a fluence activity, which is a daily activity to build number sense and application of concepts. That's pretty much we tell them, um, Jeremy has three marbles, draw three marbles. We give them directions and they um, illustrate those directions. The following thing, I'll, I'll give you an example in, on the next slide. The following thing we do is application problem. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, that's just what we did. Uh, concept development is the following thing, which is the, the, the entire lesson. It's whole group instruction as is every other, um, as is every other, um, section of math. Um, then after the, we do the our entire lesson, we do what we call a problem set, which is an independent work activity that applies the learned concept. So what I usually do is go over it, go over the problem set, ask them questions to make sure that they're understanding what the concept is, what we're going to be doing, and then I have them complete it on their own as Ms. V and I circulate and make sure that everybody's doing what they, you know, what they should be doing and answering any questions that they may have. A student debrief is at the very end, usually five to ten minutes, can be more or less depending on what students can answer, if they're really excited about it, if they're not, kind of making it excited, exciting. Talking about what we learned, um, asking them what they learned, um, how, how we learned that, kind of um, an overview over what we did. So if we learned about a row, I would ask them, what does a row say? So they won't, they know that a row says no, and so they'll know that a row, and a row is lazy, so a row lays down. Uh, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to now show you the application problem and the problem set. Now, um, in this case, the um, directions say put four counters in a row going across and then the and then put four counters in a column going up and down so a row says no and a, a column says yes so what I had them do was make a row first and they did and this is a beautiful um, example of this of this particular lesson and then a column says yes and they go ahead and make made sure that they made a column this is a great representation of what our work should look like. Um, now a problem set at the end, just to make sure that their understanding is clear and that we're not missing anything. If we have to go over any kind of information, this is where I would find out for sure. And so for example, if this student would have colored the two gloves brown and um, the five stars red, then I'd see that there would be a, a misconception and I'd address it then and there before we do the debrief. So before we continue, I would address any issues. In this case, um, the student was able to do everything beautifully, um, connecting the, the corresponding color with the corresponding number. Homework book will be sent home. Um, please keep it there, as you know. Tear out homework pages to be turned in daily or as a packet on Fridays, whatever it works um, best for you, whatever suits your schedule. It is important to complete the homework daily, but I understand that things come up and sometimes we're unable to do that. But um, if we do lesson, like today we did lesson 10, we completed lesson 10, please do lesson 10's homework tonight to ensure understanding. You may be able to find a gap that I was not able to see during math time. Maybe um, it's something that you can see because you're, you're absolutely completely one-on-one -on -one with your child. Whereas when I'm in a room, we have um, you know 30 to 35 kids at, at one given time. And so you're, you might be able to see something that they're struggling with and we can reinforce that in classroom as well as at home. There, this is a great resource right here, um, greatminds.org slash math slash parents. That's gonna be great for a parent resource. Um, if you want me to send you that link, I'd be more than happy to send it um, via Remind in a way to where you can actually just click on it for it to be easier for you. I'm here to support you in any way. <clears throat> assessments. We do have assessments for each module. Only two of the modules do not have a, a mid-module assessment, so some of them are so short that we only have one exam. Um, student trackers will be sent home with the test results. This is something that's very new, so as soon as the format is approved, I will be sending it home in the folders, and I will let you know when that is going to be. When that happens, I will let you know, okay, I'm sending it home today, and that way we can make sure that we're on top of things. This is pretty much what the tracker would look like. So Ms. Gomez, uh, for mid-module one in the middle of the module, she had an 82. She was listening in class, but kind of was having a hard time struggling, right? But at the end of the module, she was at 97%. So I know that Ms. Gomez was doing her homework. I know that Ms. Gomez was um, following instructions. I know she was listening during class. Um, 
Module 2 is pretty good. She got an A, 91% on her test. Very nice. However, look at Module 3. Module 3, you see that Ms. Gomez had a little bit of a problem um, because she, it looks like she regressed a little bit on the concepts in math. So perhaps we would be able to pinpoint what happened at this time. Like, oh, was Ms. Gomez having a hard time with the concepts that we learned here in Module 3, um, which I believe it may be weight and capacity. Um, sometimes, yes, you will see a lower score at the end of Module um, you see a higher score in the mid module and then a lower one on the end of module. It's possible because sometimes it, the, as the material gets harder, students, um, they do tend to struggle, but we need to identify those learning gaps and address them, which is exactly what we do. And this tracker will help us find that. You can tell me, hey, Ms. Gomez, I see that their score went down a little bit. What can I do at home to support it? And also I can give you um, uh, resources in order to make sure that we keep them where they at are and exceeding those expectations. So um, in this case, I will let you know when I will be sending out this tracker. This is just a, a more complicated way of um, showing test dates. So I've actually, I, I'm send, I send out a calendar, which is in your child's folder already, but I, you will know that, uh, you will know when exams are because they're beyond that calendar, which is very, which is a lot easier to see. Feel free to have this for you if you'd like. Um, feel free to keep it or um, screenshot it if you'd like, but it's not very necessary. Um, scanning deadline really is for teachers. It just lets us know when we have to submit those grades by. This is the calendar that I've included in your child's folder. Um, I will be sending one for September pretty soon um, with before the week is over. I would like for you to note that on each, each day has the lesson that we completed. Today is the 28th and we did complete lesson 10. So that's why it's important to do lesson 10 homework tonight, tomorrow lesson 11, Friday um, 12. Uh, for September, you will see that there is going to be a Labor Day, we're off on Monday. Here it's really important to take a look at what we're learning. In this case, module one focuses on counting from one to 10 as well as writing the numbers without reversals. Right now, the first two weeks of this module, we start, we focus on numbers one through five, but I really want to start focusing on one through 10 because in a couple of weeks or in a week, we're gonna start going from six to 10. So if they are not firm in writing the numbers one through five, then they will have a difficult time with six to 10 as well. So we wanna make sure that they're firm on all 10 numbers. Please practice or have them practice writing their numbers one through 10 I have also included a mat, an insert with the numbers 1 through 20. Have them trace them with an expo marker. That is why they're in the, um, in the sheet protector. So they can be able to, so your student can be able to uh, do it maybe in the car, practice over the weekend, um, because this is going to set them up for success. So this is the calendar that I will include for you, and it will say when the module, what module went in, what, and when the exams will be. It'll be, it's a very, uh, it's a much better version, um, a user-friendly version. This is the same exact thing. We call this a long-term plan, but it's uh, teachers use it. Um, it's a little bit more detailed, um, and this is not so easy on the eye. So it tells us what modules, what day we start it. Um, if you see a day that says flex day, then that means that we're catching up on any lessons we may have missed or doing intervention for those concepts that are a little bit more difficult. Um, the red dates uh, are our mid-module assessments or our end-of-module assessments. That is when we're, we're giving tests. It usually takes a teacher about two days minimum to test each student because students are tested individually, one-on-one. Um, -on -one. So this is not necessary for you to have. It's just a more difficult version of um, the calendar that I'm sending home. How can you help us? Ensure your students are getting enough sleep. Um, I don't foresee that being a problem because students come in ready to learn. Practice writing numbers and counting at home. Please make sure that, you're, that your child is touch, touching and counting, taking their time. It may seem redundant, but it is, sets a really good foundation for when they have more items to count and they're not rushing to try to find out what number it is. They're usually guessing at a number. It happens a lot during the classroom. Um, Writing numbers is so important. If they are unable to write one, the numbers one through five or identify the numbers one through five, they will struggle with the numbers six through 10. So please make sure that you are using the inserts that I'm sending home with the numbers one through 20 and have them say the number and write it uh, in the sleeve with uh, an expo marker. So as they write the one, have them say one. As they write the two, have them say two. At this point, the most important is one through 10. But if you see, think that this is a little, um, a little heavy for your child, like if one through 10 is a little stressful for them at this point, please make sure that they're at least doing one through five. It should be done daily just to reinforce practice. If you know that your child, you know your child. So if you know that your child can write the numbers one through five and identify them easily, then please don't do that. Do six to 10. If they can do that, then do 10 to 15. Um, so please make sure that you're reinforcing this at home. It's super important. 
completing the homework that needs to be done because it does reinforce what we're learning here in classroom. Plus, you might be able to identify any gaps that I wasn't able to see or that maybe uh, occur at that maybe didn't occur at, during the class time, but um, a few hours after they leave class, I wanna know, are, do they still know what we talked about? And I'll know that the next day because I'll ask them the next day, but I would like to know if you know they, they retained that information after, so that if you know for a fact that your child is having a difficult time identifying numbers, then I can be able to support you in some way by sending home some worksheets or something fun that they can do, providing you a resource, um, what kind of a game they can play that can make it fun and so on. Communication is so important. Please feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I'm very glad that we have great communication. Parents have asked me questions and I'm so thankful for them because I'd rather address them than um, have them lingering. Attendance is also very important because if they miss a lesson, then they might miss a very vi like very vital information that's gonna scaffold into the next lesson. So please make sure that your child is here. Um, uh, on time, that way they don't miss any kind of learning time. And also please, uh, if they have to leave um, or if they have to be out, please let me know or text me, let me know if there's a be the best the best time that they can be out or that maybe you can pick them up a little early. Um, uh, it's best, it depends on the, on, it's a case by case basis. So please let me know if you know your child will be out so that I can, uh, or if you know that you need, they need to be out for an appointment, I'd be more than happy to let you know, okay, you know what, for, for them, this would be the best time for them to be out because um, I know they're strong in this case, in, in you know, this subject, so they can they can handle missing out this time, but they really need to be here for math or they really need to be here for reading. Um, we can figure that out on a case by case basis. So what is the purpose of DI? It's targeted small group instruction based on the level of your student. Um, some, of, some of our students start at lesson one, some start at lesson 21, and some start at lesson 31. Um, the, this was based upon the test um, that they took when, the placement test that they took when we all came in, I believe it was on a weekend, on a Saturday, and we tested all of our kindergarten students. So that is how they were placed in these groups, depending on how, um, how they did that day. Now, uh, it's important to note that sometimes kids get shy, right? They might not have known us, they didn't know us then, so they might they might have been shy when we asked them certain questions. Some were not shy, some were very um, social, and that's great, but I do, um, I do understand if you have a concern saying, well, you know, they were very shy that day, or they were sleepy, um, so you wanna make sure that they're placed in the correct group. I just want you to know that they will be. Um, so sometimes when students maybe perhaps were very shy that first day, but now I notice that they're way advanced for the group that they're in, we can make changes to their groups. So please be aware that um, we will keep them challenged and they, they're going to be in an appropriate group. The best thing about DI is that it's a small group um, it's small group and it's targeted and there are no more than 12 students in each group and um, so the great thing about this is that it's um, we have two groups going on at one time and then we have some students working at independent tables so they're expected to work on their worksheets that are graded um, by themselves which they're learning to do very well while two of us teach at the same time um, as you can tell my voice is um, trying to trying to leave me and this happens a lot because we are essentially talking all day we're talking and and um teaching during di but we're also doing the same thing with math we ask a lot of questions we keep conversations going um so it, this is um, so if you're a student. Also, we um, sometimes we have to raise our voice because um, the, la the, the, the there's a group at the middle of the table. We kind of have to raise our voice and be like, you know, let, um, let's keep the voice down. Let's keep our level down because Miss V and I are both teaching at the same time. So there's a voice level going on on my end. There's a voice voice level going on on her end, and then we have kids trying to be chatterboxes and in, in, at independent work tables, which get tends to get a little loud sometimes. Um, <clears throat> so. It seems it would be great to be able to show you um, the way that it works in a classroom, but again, unfortunately, it's very difficult to have somebody to be able to record that exactly how they work. Um, so I'm gonna try to find the best way to be able to show you that. How does it support wit and wisdom? It helps students read text fluently and accurately so they can work on deep understanding of the text and wit and wisdom. So reading helps them um, figure out the sounds. They're finding out the sounds, learning the sounds. They're learning how to blend the sounds and that's how they're able to start reading. And in Wit and Wisdom, um, unfortunately, I cannot narrate the area, the Wit and Wisdom portion of this slide, but I am going to provide the slides that Miss Macias um, went over uh, because I did not, um, I was not trained in Wit and Wisdom, so I'm not sure what they're doing, uh, what exactly how they're how they're um, 
their curriculum is working right now. So what you can do is you can reach out to Ms. Macias for some more information or set up a conference with her. So this information is for readers, direct instruction, what it looks like for pre-readers. So for the students that don't read yet, um, they're learning letter sounds or putting sounds together to form words, which is blending sounds, and they're reading a group of words. For example, I know I put some um, a sight word sheet in the folder as well. Try those. Just just try that way. Students can see. Students will be able to memorize what those words look like. So even though they're not sounding out the words. Um, it would, it's good to practice those sight words. So if you see C, and so point to it and, and put your finger under the S and go down to the letter E, E, to, to sounds E, E. That way you just go C and have them say it C and point to it. Go to the next one and go on and so on. For developing readers, this is these are for um, students that are already reading or that are going to read, um, which we are not quite there yet, um, but we will be there absolutely by the end of the year. And so we're definitely trying to get there um, with your support as well, helping out with um, with uh, homework, with sounds, um, and then and I definitely see that that we will be completely successful in in getting to the reading level. The sample lesson, um, I did provide a sample lesson when I was here. I know that a lot of you were able to see it. Well, not very many, to be honest. I was expecting a bigger turnout. A lot of you guys told me that you weren't able to make it, and that's okay. Thank you so much for letting me know that you couldn't make it or why you didn't make it. I absolutely love that that's, how, that's uh, the great communication that we have, that you're telling me that you couldn't make it, and I absolutely adore that. So I was going to uh, provide this presentation either way so that you could be able to have access to this in the future but please know that I'm here to support you so I know that a lot of you were not able to make it for a particular reason and I understand but I didn't want you to miss out on this information um, how do we make this um, content exciting for all students I'm gonna answer these questions because you weren't able to see my my presentation we make it exciting because we get excited about it so um, if I'm teaching a student I, and I was looking um, at my book and I said everybody keep your eyes on me and I'm looking around to make sure their eyes are on me and I'll look at my book and I'll say everybody what is this get ready and that's a snap and students are answering all on cue and they'll say a window and if they say a door I'll be like my turn Miss Gomez what is this get ready a window everybody it's your turn do it with me everybody what is this Get ready, a window, all by yourselves. You can do it at 100%. 100% means everybody answering, um, waiting for the signal, and everybody's eyes are on me. Okay, everybody, make sure you put your thinking caps on. Everybody, what is this? Get ready, a window, so they answer that. It's consistent, and if there are, if there are mistakes, then we go back and we redo it. Um, it can seem redundant, um, but it's what's reinforcing their, um, their knowledge. So, it's very fun. I wish I could record that, but it's very, very, very fun. Um, they get points. So, for example, wow, I really like how um, Jane uh, was looking at me the entire time. Great job. Two points for Jane. Um, oh, wow, everybody's still sitting in their seat. Two more points for you. Every 10 points, we do a cheer, and they absolutely love these cheers. So um, that is how we make it exciting for them. How could this content be challenging for students? Well, we can make it a little difficult if students are not able to answer based on like the book maybe they're not bored they're not interested they need an actual they need a physical type of visual well i will do whatever needs to be done so if we're learning prepositions so and we're looking at the book and where is where is this cat over the bicycle well if they're not responding to that because they don't really care much for that then i'll grab a student or i'll grab a chair and i'll be like okay guys Take a look at this chair hmm i wonder where this chair is is this chair over miss gomez get ready and they they'll say no of course right if it's not over and that's how they're learning because they think it's very silly sometimes and sometimes we have to do that that's completely okay but it is very structured why is this content important it's important for them to know prepositions it's important for them to know on above in front of um below they need to know these things and a lot of times they don't they can't learn them from you because they learn them in passing and here they're learning um in a um, well, in a learning setting, it's very different. So if you tell your child, hey, can you get me that stapler that's on top of the table? Well, they'll be like, okay. And they're not really connecting on top of the table. They're not really making a big choice. They're not really big, making a big um, decision. They just see the stapler and they're going to go get it because they know what the stapler is, right? Or the cup, they're going to grab that. Now, in this case, I'll use a pen or a pencil and be like, wow, look at my pencil. And I'll touch the table and I'll say, is my pen on the table? And I'll have them think. 
give them a little bit of think time, about 30 seconds, and sometimes they need more, so if I see them um, kind of thinking about it, they'll be like, get ready, yes, okay, say the whole thing about where my pen is, get ready, the pen is on the table, that's essentially how it goes on. So how is this content teaching, content or teaching different from how you learned it in school? Well, it's very different from how I learned it. Frankly, I do not remember how I learned it, but it definitely was not this way. Um, I have done this for, I did this two years prior. I did not do it last year, but I did do it this year. I'm doing it again this year, and it, um, it's like riding a bicycle. You get right used to it, but you get right back into it, and you get used to it. But it works. It's very, it's very um, helpful, and I feel like it's a very great foundation for, a very good foundation for reading. The goal for students, their goal is to get to the first grade reading book, the orange book. So we'll start talking about goal setting and then your students will start knowing. Once we set our parameters for what our goals are, how we're gonna teach our students what our goals are, then you'll be able to, you'll start hearing that they wanna get to the first grade reading book or to um, the orange book. How to help at home. Reading for 10 to 15 minutes per night is wonderful. Um, read to them, read with them, sit next to them with a book. Um, make that a ritual so that they know that they, they know that um, you're almost held accountable. So they might say, hey mom, hey dad, um, it's reading time because it's right before bed or it's right before dinner or sometimes during dinner, you know, uh, whatever works for you. But that really helps. It also helps with like, you know, just that uh, parent-child bond. They love reading. They absolutely love when we read stories here. And so I'm sure that they love doing that with you as well. Uh, also, um, please don't make it a stressful situation. And by that, I mean, don't worry about um, them reading already or sounding out already. Just make it fun. Enjoy. If it's a calming book, read that calm book. If it's a silly, funny book, read that funny book and have a great time with them. It helps to um, put your place your finger under the words as you read it. Um, I know that they're usually looking at the pictures, but sometimes when you read the same book over and over and they love the same books, they, they love reading the same books over and over. Um, sometimes when that happens, um, that actually helps out kind of like with sight words so even though they've read the book a million times they might not be able to read but they'll be able to uh, find some of the same words because of how many times you've read it so they hear the sound and they also see the word all right so that's it for um, for the DI part as well now this is these are the slides for wit and wisdom I'm going to go ahead and simply um, uh, play through them so that you can be able to see them. And if there's something that I know that can be done or I can read them off to you, uh, but any specific questions about wit and wisdom, please feel free to reach out to Ms. Macias.